The Grampians is an ancient landscape. It's been home to the Jadwajali, the Jabarong, and the Gundijmara people for tens of thousands of years. It's a famous landscape. It's inspired cultural works from Australian writers, poets, photographers, and it contains over 90% of the Victorian Aboriginal rock painting sites. Importantly, wildlife is part of that landscape and many species are under pressure and are missing from the Grampians. Living up here and being part of the community, you get to listen and hear stories, bandicoots crossing the middle of the road in Halls Gap. Only a hundred odd years ago, uh, brolgers being in their, their hundreds, eastern quolls raiding chook yards. The, the wildlife was abundant across the landscape and it's hanging on now and it's hanging on because we've got programs like Grampians Ark protecting it. And if we can get it right and we can deliver the right scale predator control, we can bring the wildlife back. The Grampians Ark project originated from a perimeter baiting program. So initially it was more about being a good neighbour to our pastoralists on the fringe and helping protect their economic contributions. Then it morphed into protecting the biodiversity within the Grampians National Park. We've got a really high diversity of plants and animals here. In the early 90s, it was identified that the brush-tailed rock wallabies numbers were declining across the park. So then it morphed into an effort to really protect the remaining population of the brush-tailed rock wallabies. We've moved into identifying other species that need protection as well, like the long-nosed potteroo and the southern brown bandicoot, the heath mice and the smoky mice. For a fox control program to be effective, it has to work across a landscape scale. So getting the community involved is only going to enhance the benefit, but also has a very positive social and economic outcome as well. The first time we had the meetings or you know, got together to talk about fox control, it was a pleasant surprise as to how many people did come to those days because they were interested. Just being so close to the Grampians makes you more aware of not just farm environment, but the uh, you know, environment for the area. Our landcare group and the Mirinatwa landcare group have been doing fox baiting for over 20 years. With the decrease in fox numbers, we've seen an increase in feral cat numbers, and we've seen you know the effects feral cats have on our little native critters. So there is support for feral cat control in the National Park to really reduce that, that impact that they have. People love living here, so they're going to look after the place. And with all the support that we've got from Parks Vic and our other organisations, we're learning how to do that. And when the fox numbers are low, you know, your sheep survive. To see the benefits of greater lamb survival because of less foxes around is just fantastic. You can have a really productive farm and you can also have a thriving habitat. It's a fantastic feeling if someone sights a curlew or the brolgers coming back or a bandicoot. Like it's just, you think, wow, it's working, we're doing something. We've been able to develop closer relationships with landcare groups and surrounding farmers and farmers have directly benefited by having less predation on their fat lambs and, and their agricultural produce. But the ultimate aim and goal of Grampians Ark is improving protection for native wildlife. And we've got a partnership with Deakin University, tracking the recovery of native small mammals, not only to fox baiting, but also climatic responses and impacts such as bushfire. Our team at Deakin has been working with Parks Victoria for 12 years to help deliver some of the science behind the management here. We have long-term research where we've been looking at small mammal responses to fox baiting, fire and the climatic conditions. The reason our team is still here 12 years later is because of this amazing partnership we have with Parks Victoria. Our science is actually helping inform and improve management here, which is an outcome we want to see. We want to see, like Parks, this landscape improve and be everything it can be. One of our big challenges as a society is to pass something on, to leave our systems in a 
as good or better condition than it was before us. We've lost so many species on our watch and the onus is upon us to leave something for our kids. If we're represented by what we leave behind, what does it say about us if we let everything disappear? Grampians Arc's a really important project. You know, they're a very large scale, a project that is clearly having an impact. Fox numbers are far suppressed here now compared to what they used to be. We saw in 2012 bandicoots all over this landscape. That fox baiting had managed to allow these species to survive the bad times to take advantage of the good times. If we didn't have that fox baiting, the question is, would those bandicoots have blinked out? Our understanding now of really the interplay between our predators and the foxes and cats, fire in this landscape, changing climate, is really the bit that's starting to feed into what we do. We have to be more responsive to fire in our landscape. These are conditions we're going to see under climate change and so understanding them now actually allows us to be much more resilient with our management as climate change starts to intensify. Bushfire is a natural part of the environment but the bushfires we've had have been pretty hot, they've been fast moving and the impacts on animals like your small mammals in the Greater Grampians, Gary Word landscape has been quite detrimental. They're vulnerable to predators like foxes and cats. Fire comes through, it can remove the habitat that they, they live in, they forage, they find food in, and it just places additional pressure on these particular species. So it's really important that DELP works with Parks Victoria to manage the species into the long term. Fire sees no boundaries, so it is absolutely critical that we work hand in hand to deliver fire management across the Greater Grampians region. So we are undertaking landscape scale plan burning over the next five years in particular to reintroduce fire into the landscape, not just for reducing the fuels in the forest, but also for the biodiversity values as well. All those pressures on small mammals, birds and reptiles in our beautiful Greater Grampians landscape, it's really important that we can protect them for our future generations to come. The extinction of species is something that's really serious and is close to my heart. You don't want to see a species gone from an area. These species have a place in the Australian landscape and it's absolutely critical that we work together, Delp and Parks Victoria, to ensure that they survive into the future so we're not dealing with extinction. So we're not showing our children and our grandchildren pictures of long-nosed potteroos that used to be in the park. We can actually say they do live in the park and they're in abundance. We've had some significant achievements with Grampians Arc. The program has created a, a, a base level of investment to protect native wildlife. And from that control of predators, we've had an opportunity to restore missing species like the brush-tailed rock wallaby that went locally extinct in the 1990s. By investing over these years in, in fox control and reducing their numbers and their impact, we're providing a place where we can reintroduce species that we may have lost. In 1999, there was only one known rock wallaby surviving in the Grampians. So that animal was captured and was taken to a captive breeding program to form the backbone of the future for the species here in Victoria. With the support of Parks Victoria, philanthropists and the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, the Rock Wallaby Recovery Team reintroduced the brush tail rock wallabies here in the Grampians. Moving into the future with climate change, these refuge areas like the Grampians are going to become even more important for conservation of species. I don't want to be a part of a society that, uh, that thinks it's okay for species to go missing in the landscape and for introduced species to take over. So I think it's important for us to band together and work with the community, work with other partners to, first of all, protect what we've got, but create an environment where future generations can enjoy those species and landscapes that we take for granted. I've been a member of Friends of Grampians almost since the beginning. There were some bandicoots around in Halls Gap when I first arrived, but I haven't seen one ever since. I feel that it's really important that we 
we keep the diversity and, and the splendour of this world. We've concentrated on, on the fauna, but the flora is pretty important too. And so we've talked about foxes and cats, but deer and goats are, are an enormous threat to, to the flora of this place. And, and the flora is, is beautiful and unique. We've got plants that grow here that don't grow anywhere else in the world, and it would be tragic to lose them. The Grampians is an iconic national heritage listed landscape and the Grampians Ark project has created a fantastic opportunity to build upon why people find this place special. People come up here and see wildlife but there's a lot of species that are missing or only hanging on in certain pockets of this landscape and if we can get good introduce predator control, controlling the European red fox and controlling feral cats, building in good deer control and feral goat control. We've got an opportunity to save what's here, restore what's missing and have a benefit for all of the community.